Let's review a, a topic that we learned back in chapter 1 in section 1.6, and that is uh, if you took the inverse and its function, and if you did its composite function, so if you did f of f inverse, do you remember that as long as it equaled x, and if you did the other way around, if you did f inverse of, of f of x, and if they both equaled x, what was our conclusion? That that f and f inverse were, were truly inverse functions then. Okay, so uh, knowing this right here, uh, the same thing happens then with sine and arc sine, cosine, arc cosine, tangent, and arc tangent. Since they're both inverses, check this out down here, sine of arc sine of x equals x and arc sine and sine of y if you if you do these right here they will they will always equal whatever this is right here so since, so since this is y it would be y since this was x it would be x what this is saying is that if these are truly inverses of each other you will get whatever this value is okay but make a important note right now that the domain range must, and I mean must, it must fall within these values right here. Okay, so it must be true though. If this is going to be true, then the x must be between negative 1 and 1, and y must be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, so just take a look at this right here. This is very important here. So this right here is our domain, right? Arc cosine of x. Our x values are our domain values. Or in this case, if the inside is sine of y, then that means it has to be negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. If they do not fall within this, this range value or this cosine value, then this is not true then. It will not be true that you can just write down y. You would just say that it's not possible. Okay, and you can take a look at that for cosine. The cosine of arc cosine of x is x, and the arc cosine of cosine of y is y. But what must be true is this, is that this domain and range uh, must be true. And you can see right here for the uh, for the tangent a, a little easier, the only thing that matters is the range values. Why? Because the domain um, is all real numbers, right? It goes from left to right forever. So that's why the only restriction we're going to have is our domain, meaning that this x value can be 100, it could be a million, it could be 0.5, but the y value must be within a particular number. And let me just give a an example of when this doesn't work, and then we're going to do some examples of uh, when they do. But here would be an example of something that doesn't work. So, so each x and y must fall within the restrictions, or else it will not work. Here's an example. Okay. So this is arc sine of sine of 3 pi over 2. Okay. So that means... We have we have this right here, right? That means that this value, this y value, or in this case, in this, in this example right here, this 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 three pi over two must fall within negative pi over two and pi over two. And but let's say if you're like, Shh, man, that's so dumb right there, dude. I'm still gonna do this problem anyways. All right, well, okay, well, watch this. The sine of three pi over two. Okay. Is going to give you a uh, negative one, okay, and then the 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 arc sine of of negative one is going to be negative pi over two. Now wait a minute, I thought that this rule said that wh whatever this y value is, you must get that exact same y value. Ah, we didn't get it here. Three pi over two is not equal to negative pi over two, okay. So this this didn't work. This didn't work right here where like you just kind of cross out arc sine and sine and just say it's y. This only works when this value has to fall within this range. Okay, so that's why our restrictions are very pertinent and we don't want to skip that there. All right, so let's do a few examples here now. All right, so let's use the inverse properties. If possible, find the exact value. So uh, let's try not to be tricked here, right? Okay, so let's find the tangent of arc tangent of negative five. Okay, so that means that what what we have to do is we always want to check this value. What what does this have to be inside of of what element? 
Well, this has to be within the domain, the domain of, oh, I'm sorry, parentheses, of negative infinity and infinity. Well, how'd you know that? Well, look, if you go back to our property here, it says right here, see right here, tangent of arctangent of x. Are there any restrictions to x? All right, there are no restrictions. So, so it doesn't matter what that value is, we can use negative 5. So this is true. So, so that means I know that my tangent and my, and my arctangent are inverses of each other. So my answer is just negative 5. If you're like, uh, dude, I'm still not getting this. Okay, okay, look. You know that you can cross these out and just say that the answer is this when you check this value if it falls within these domain and ranges. So in this case, we had to find the tangent of arctangent of negative 5. Well, look over here. There are no restrictions to negative 5 or to our x value, which is why our answer is just going to be since that was negative 5. And so that means our answer then would be negative 5. Okay. All right, so let's check this out. We're going to find the arc sine of sine of 5 pi over 3. So before I just go, oh, I'm going to cross these out, and the answer is a 5 pi over 3. Ah, mijo. You have much to learn, Padawan. Okay, watch this. You can't just do that. Why? Because just as we did right here, let's check. Let's check to make sure that this uh, range value, now we're not doing our domain, check back in our property, Okay, see right here, it's arc sine of sine, so we, so we have to check our y value. This value has to be within negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Well, if you go back to our problem, is this within the elements of negative pi over 2 and pi over 2? Well, no, right, because this is actually bigger than pi over 2, so this is not true. Okay, however, before you just say it's not possible... Remember how we learned about co co or um, uh, um, co co angles, co terminal angles. There we go, <laughs> co terminal angles. Meaning, if I take this angle phi pi over three, and then if I just do one full rotation by just subtracting two pi, right? So this now becomes a, what's a six? So phi minus three. That's going to be negative pi over three. So phi pi over three is the same thing as negative pi over 3. So I can rewrite this now as arc sine of sine of negative pi over 3. And the reason why that this is super rad is the following. Is that now let's check this. It is true that negative pi over 3 is within this element. It's within negative pi over 2 and 2 pi. So since this is true now we can go ahead and say, oh, our answer is negative pi over 3. Okay? So th the big trick is to always check this value, wh whether it be checking the domain or range to see if it, if it lies within that element. If it is, do like you're good to go. Okay. Um, cosine of arc sine or cosine inverse of pi. So, so let's see here. Negative, or not negative, arc cosine, or the inverse of cosine, has to be within the, the elements of negative 1 to 1. It has to be within that domain. Remember, let's go back over here. It has to be, it's this one. Cosine of arc cosine, we're looking at our x values, right? So it has to be within negative 1 and 1. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Pi is approximately... 3.14. Is that within negative 101? No. Well, very good, Billy Wright. So it's not within it. And even if I add pi to this, or if I subtract pi, like trying to get a coterminal angle, it's never going to be within this range right here. So in that case, who would say this one is not possible? Okay. It's not possible because this is not within our, our element of between negative 1 and 1. And um, even if you um, try to find coterminal angles, that, that would not make it possible there. 